Before diving into the code, let's discuss the fundamentals and talk about the MVC design pattern. MVC stands for Model View Controller, and it's a design pattern that was created roughly in the 70s by Xerox. Xerox did a lot of good things, however, they didn't seem to pay off for them. If you're not familiar with design patterns, there is a famous book called Design Patterns that gives you an introduction to the idea. A design pattern is essentially a reusable piece of code, but not quite as specific as a code, more a framework or an architecture, or a model. An MVC is a fairly complex reusable idea or framework. ASP.NET implemented it in 2007, and the current version is 5.1, so it's a fairly mature and well-used architecture. It's also a design pattern that doesn't only apply to web pages. It can be applied to anything that has a view and does some processing. There are three obvious pieces to a model view controller. The first, of course, is the model, and that's basically where the data resides. And the data can be from anywhere. Commonly, it's from a database or a business layer, but it can also be just a simple view data structure. The view is simply the user interface. And the controller processes requests from the user interface, operates on the model data, and renders the views. So the controller plays a traffic cop between the model and the view. This is the classic diagram of an MVC design pattern. The user sees a view and interacts with it in some way. And the user requests go into the controller, which calls the model data and manipulates it in some way, and creates an update to the model, which gets passed through to the view, and the user sees the new view. In ASP.NET, there's some subtle variations and specifics to that. Our view is requested through URL requests, and there is a routing system that takes those requests from the view and calls into the controller. The controller has action methods that are called from the view through the routing. The controller will then interact with the model, and potentially there's a database backing that model. So in this diagram, you could consider the model to be a business layer that sits in between the database and the controller. The controller will then extract some data from the model, and send it back out to the view. And the view will send it out in terms of an HTTP response. The MVC design pattern gives you a separation of concerns. In other words, the data is handled only in the model classes. The actions are only handled in the controllers, and the user interface is only handled in the views. In fact, the controller doesn't know anything about the views or the UI. This can actually be frustrating if you're used to a different way of programming. The model is a data storage class, and the source of data doesn't matter. It could come from a database, it could come from a spreadsheet. It doesn't really matter in these terms, but the controller doesn't really know what the source of the data is, and certainly the view doesn't know either. This is one of the great things about the separation of concerns, is that the classes that comprise one part of the MVC design pattern, for instance, classes that are in the controller, don't have to know anything about the model or the view so they can be written essentially independently of those. And the models and the views can change, but as long as their interfaces do not, the controller doesn't mind. So in this respect, you can change your views dramatically, and the user interface can change a lot, but the controller and the model doesn't have to change a bit. So it makes really supportable, maintainable code. The controller inherits from system.web.mvc.controller, and it contains public action methods. The action methods are associated with configurable URLs, and that gets into the routing system that we'll discuss. A URL request will call an action method in the controller. It can be a post or a get. Then that action method will process some data and then return a view object. That view object doesn't have to be an entire web page, by the way. It can actually just be a view for a particular area of a web page, like a div, for example. And finally, the view presents the user interface. In early MVC, ASP.NET Web Forms were used. It actually gives you an idea of the flexibility of this. You can have a controller, and it could use the old ASP.NET Web Forms, but now in MVC3, a thing called Razor has been introduced. And Razor allows some code within HTML context. It's similar to the server-side calls in ASPX. In fact, it's a replacement for those calls. But the syntax is much smoother, and you can do more in Razor. So those are the basics of the model view controller design pattern.